What's up YouTube fam and welcome back to another video. Alright, so today we've got a really nice pair of Vintage Floor Shine Imperials. We're going to be ripping these right down to the bare bones. We build them right back up to their former glory. So guys, join us today and see what it's all about. on these vintage floor shine bad boys so what we're going to be doing is recreating them right up to their former glory so what we're going to be doing with this at the end here this is called a suicide deal so we're going to replicate that in the end and also the five nails it's a floor shine trademark that are placed in the sole we're going to replicate that so first off we're going to be ripping off all this old stuff right down to the uppers we're going to remove the welt the soles and the heels and the heel block so let's get it done Now, interestingly enough, it's a plastic heel block that are on these vintage floor shines. And then you've got a leather top piece on the top there. So what we're not going to be doing is saving this piece and reusing it like we do sometimes with shoes. We're going to just trash that shit and then we're going to be build, building back up with some new leather pieces. Got a bunch of old nails that we're just holding everything on, so we're just going to remove all these. Considering this shoe's age, and a lot older than I am, they're in super good condition. These have got a double sole on them, so we're going to be replicating the double sole. Two nice oak bark tan soles on top. Gives it that nice thick look to the shoe. So now I'm just prying apart where everything's connected so we can get the knife in and break the stitches a little bit easier. A lot of them are already broken on the top here. Sort of just where it's worn, but obviously at the back and under the heel area, we'll need to burst all these for the sole to come off. Boom, that's our sole off. So what I would like to do with these is keep them and use them as a template, just so I know exactly where the original nails go in the sole. And I also like to keep these to create my own little floor shine graveyard with all the different soles that I've taken off the floor shines. Done two so far, hoping to get that a lot more over the years of doing them. All right, so now that that's used apart, we can have a look, see what's going on on the inside. So here is our old shank. And we've got our cork layer and our welt. So what we normally do now is unpick all the stitches on the welt, but since these are in for a re-welt, we're actually just going to remove this welt and unpick the stitches that attaches this welt to the shoe. They are all hidden under the cork layer, so we're going to heat that up just to soften it, rip all the cork out, and then redo it. Okay, so I've had the shoe under the heat lamp for a couple of minutes, and it just softens this 
cork allows it to come out just a little bit easier. Especially with these being vintage, it's quite old, quite a long time this has been in here. And with the compression of the foot when the guy's been walking with them, it just really compresses it tight. So a wee bit of heat just loosens it up a little bit and allows us to get it out just a wee bit easier. Because you can be here for quite a while taking out some cork sometimes. It takes up quite a bit of time. Anything we can do to rush the time through makes it a bit better. Alright, so we've got our old welts off and these are our old stitches. They're just coming out quite nice. Some of them split. It's nice when they come off in one run. But, you know, when you hit that record button, they don't like to come out in a one -er. So now that the shoes are completely torn down, right down to the uppers, what we're going to be doing now is putting a wee bit of cleaning and conditioning into them. Because we've removed the welts, this area hasn't been touched since the shoes have been constructed. So they start to get dried out and get a little bit cracky sometimes. These are in super good condition for their age, so it is surprising how well they are. But what we're going to do is just really work some cleaning and conditioning into the welt area before we attach the new welt on. Because we've got this chance, we might as well take it. So what we're going to be using is some Saphir Renovator. So this is a cleaner and conditioner. There's a lot of good nutrients that have been lost back into the shoes. So we're going to apply a decent coat of this all the way around, allow that to soak right into the shoe. It also takes off any old polish that we've got there that's been building up over the years. area. Alright guys, so these are both nice and conditioned now. So what we're going to do is just show you a different kind of welts that we can do on shoes. So here we've got our original flat welt which just stitches on the shoe as normal. We've also got our glue on welts which are used for Blake shoe construction. The difference between a Goodyear welted shoe like this and a Blake construction is the Blake has a fake glued on welt and then it's stitched from the inside of the shoe. So it goes through the insole of the shoe and stitched all the way around. With the Goodyear welt, you stitch on the welt and then once that's on, you then stitch through the welt, through the sole, and that's what attaches it all together. So we've got, yep, those two welts and then we've got the one that we're gonna be using which is called the split welt. Now it's called a split welt because it's got this little split all along it there and when that's attached to the shoe, it leaves a nice little part that goes around the shoe there. So it's got an extra little piece of leather that just flows around the shoe and it gives a really, really nice look. Now these will soak for about 20 minutes, allow them to really soften up. It makes applying them to the shoe a lot easier, especially around the toe area and the heel area, which really got to curve around. It's good to have it nice and soft and allows it to go around a little bit easier. Alright guys, so let's roll that B-roll for the full Rewell experience.
Yeah, so we're back in the workshop. Now we're gonna just pop the shank back in. So we've just glued the area that it's gonna go in, glued the back of the shank, and now we're gonna fill up some cork in this area. Get a bit placed in. And we've got some nice flexor fill cork in here. So we're just gonna spread that on. We're just gonna do one coat all the way around the bottom here in the cavity. Now this is good, as it helps with some water resistance. It also, over time, the cork will shape and mold to the customer's foot, allowing a nice comfortable fit. So once this is dry, we're just gonna use the fans on the machine here, and we're just gonna rough down all of this level so it's nice and flat, and that'll be ready for the soles to go on top. Alright, time for some glue on this one. So we've sanded this flush so it's nice and, nice and smooth and flat. I'm going to pop on a couple of coats of glue all the way around the bottom here. First glue will get absorbed quite a lot by the welt, so we'll just pop a second coat, possibly a third coat on there just for extra security, making sure that we get a good, nice bond. Alright, so that's our soul being in the heat lamp for a couple of minutes, reactivating the glue, and now we're going to get this stuck to the sheet. Right, so we've trimmed up the first sole, now we're just going to add some glue onto this one, let this soak in, and then add a second coat of glue again. With it being another piece of new leather, it really just soaks up the first layer of glue. So, second coat after this one, and we'll fire on the second sole. A lot of the floor shines, they come with double soles, so we're replicating that, have some two double oak bark tanned JR leather soles. Nice and chunky feel, nice and chunky look to the shoe. Second song stuck on. Okay, so that's our shoes being stitched. Now our stitcher is over at our other branch at the moment, and I forgot to take the camera around to record that part. But here we are, full stitch all the way around, 360 on the shoe. So now we're gonna add some little detailing in the bottom. So we're gonna add some fudging around the sides and sort of where the heel is attached. We're gonna add some fudging down there as well, just to give the bottoms a little bit of a look and pop in some of the pins. All right, so we're gonna use the old sole to trace where the original nail and went in on the sole. I'm just going to use a wee pen to mark. Here we 
one, we'll go with that one. So now we've got all our marks and hammer some nails in. Alrighty, let's get these heels on. So what we've done is we've cut up a JR sole and we've created a leather heel block. We've got a leather piece on top, leather piece on the bottom. I'm just gonna get this stuck on. Imperials. I have to say so myself, they came out pretty tasty. 
So for this detailed restoration, what we done this time around was ripped everything right down to the bare bones. We rebuilt them up with a new split welt and we've gone for a double JR leather sole and in the heel we've gone for what's called a suicide heel. 69 nails detailed in each heel comes to what 140 nails pretty much. Uh, it took quite a bit of time but the end result is super special. Alright guys, so as always, thank you so much for checking these out. You guys are legends, each and every one of you, my respect to you. Alright, so I've been Cobbler G, if you guys are new here, I'm doing new videos all the time. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and drop a little comment, let me know what you think about the job below. Alright, so until the next one, I've been Cobbler G, you've been legends, a peace. Thank you.